1984. And there you see the graphics. First shot, Mark likes it, and he strikes on the left-hand lane. Well, he has started with a number of strikes here this evening. In the opening game that he bowled, he opened with the first 11. And, of course, in the second game, Mark opened up with the first four. And more importantly, he seems to have made the adjustment on lane 45. They got lost there for a little while. Yeah, Chris Warren's real crazy about that, too. You know, Chris Warren had a great match play record in Austin, Texas, too. He's 18-5 and 1 here. I think he was like 17-7 and seven there. So he says this match play is easy. Doesn't take a lot of time, and Zippo! Oh, they call him the Dynamo from Dallas, and uh, this kid can just flat bowl. Don't kid yourself. There you see the uh, first good look at the right-hander, 23 years of age. This week, 228.23, high game of 300. His brother, Andy, also shot a 300 game down in Texas earlier this week. He has nine brothers and sisters, so he comes from a very competitive situation. Seven boys and uh, three girls. I don't know anything about strategy. This kid. And there is his mother, Mary. As, uh, believe me, she's a little more nervous, perhaps, than she might look at that point. Flew in from Dallas earlier today to watch her son bowl. She introduced him to the game of bowling when he was about 12. He obviously caught on in a hurry. Mark Roth has been perfect on the right-hand lane for the entire evening. And just as he gets started, he hears something in the background, and he very alertly stops. Shakes his head and gears up one more time. Gets so quiet in the bowling center that uh, just the slightest sound can well, set a player there, off. There was a waitress in the back here emptying an ashtray. And bang. I don't know if that's what he heard or not, but I heard it. No tips tonight. And 4-9. And well, he says, thank you to somebody. It wasn't the waitress. It was somebody sitting over here to the left. I don't know. He pointed a finger right at him and said, thank you. Well, somebody right now is feeling pretty badly. Whether it was an accident or not, it happened. And distracted him. And now he's got a 4-9 staring him in the face on the lane that he has just uh, owned here this evening. He's a great split maker. <laughs> I thought he hit it too full. Got to hit that four pin on the left side, aiming at about an eighth of an inch at 60 feet. It just clipped the nine and says, all right, take that. Well, Roth goes back to work on the left-hand lane. Trying to dig in, and he does. Reaches out, slaps that seven pin right out of play. The intensity's there, Doug. Boy, we've been kidding him all week long. Mark, you're too loose. You need to tighten up a little bit. Flush in the pocket. Two pin goes up over the seven pin and then hits it on the way down. Yeah, that's two points for a takedown. No question about that. Chris Warren, undaunted at this point, though. Hey, I'm taking a walk in the park. I opened with a double. No big deal. Watch his first step. He picks that toe up and then puts the heel down. And takes five quick steps and strikes. It will. Well, he's uh, five foot five inches tall and weighs a strapping 115 pounds. That ball he's wrestling right match, now might about, be in trouble. That's about one ninth of his total gross weight, that 16 pound bowling ball. But he starts with a turkey. Hey, he's fearless, this kid. Made the championship finals just four weeks ago in the Austin Open and defeated Pete McCordick in his opening match before losing to the eventual winner, Kent Wagner, 227 to 189. Trying to extend his lead right here. 
And looking for four in a row. Good shot. Oh, oh. And that snap off the lane in a hurry, and he's got the double pinochle. And uh, as David Letterman would say, that's not a pretty sight. He got it wider, and it hooked quicker. Out to about the sixth board. Now watch how much this ball hooks in the last 15 feet of that lane. Right through the heart of the pins when it looked like it was going to be flush. You thought it was solid. Mm -hmm. So did I. Boy, it sure looked like it. Boy, but major overreaction. Just maybe hit it too good. Gave it too much room and got the overreaction. Is right. Well, he'll give that double pinochle a run and just barely miss. Well, he went for it boldly, costing two more pins and count. Well, the match kind of turns around a little bit at that stage, and Mark Roth has been in the right spot at the right time all evening long. Let's see if it continues. At the prize money breakdown for our championship round finalists this evening, $16,000 on top. 82.50 for second, and uh, I've lost count. Six, five, and four, I think it was, for third, fourth, and fifth. Roth right now is thinking only one thing, and that's winning. 17 years as a PBA member was a unanimous choice for the PBA's Hall of Fame this past year. Well, if he wasn't, something's wrong. Yep. I, anybody that didn't vote for him for the Hall of Fame had a, <laughs> a Rip Van Winkle for the last 20 years. Four times the PBA's Player of the Year. He's done it all in the game. We're trying to win 33 here this evening. <laughs> You know, it's funny, though, Mike, in watching Mark Bowl the last month, he has really bowled well. He's so loose, so confident. Uh, I'll tell you what, Chris Warren really made an error letting him finish on that right lane, I think, but uh, we'll wait and see. You know, Warren with a donut there in the fourth. That was the double pinochle. And Mark Roth, being the seasoned veteran that he is, jumped all over that opportunity. Well, you know that's going to happen. This guy did win 32 titles by not taking advantage of opponents' mistakes. It's been a while since he's won, though, and he's very hungry indeed. When you see Mark Roth start to run out shots, you know that he just flat is ready to win. And there's just Chris Warren, I feel for him right now because you've got a guy here that just has so much experience, and right now he's bowling with so much confidence, and he smells victory. He knows how to win. Chris Warren has to prove yet that he knows how to win. Almost like David and Goliath. Well, right now, well, Goliath is winning. Mm -hmm. Here comes the slingshot, though. Don't count Chris Warren out of anything. Watched him play match play the last couple of weeks. And he told Harry Smith, the PBA's assistant national tournament director, you know, Harry, I, I have trouble qualifying sometimes, but boy, I sure like that match play. And I can understand why. He likes to go toe to toe. If he doesn't strike right now, Denny. I think the match is over. Mike, it's only the fifth frame. I understand that. I Going out a little in here. All right. Taking plenty of time here in the sixth. Needs a double desperately. Oh, got that light hit. Now he made that adjustment for that high hit. Boy, he's got he has vicious carry into that pocket. Keeps told himself me, alive right there. Told me in one match game block this week, he left 38 10 pins, made a change with his equipment, and that was the difference in the tournament. That ball barely got to the head pin, but see it hit the two, come back and get that wall shot. Back to Mr. Roth on the right hand lane. He's got a turkey working. <laughs> Four bagger now, Danny. Well, I don't know what the price of admission was here this evening at Thruway Lanes, but, but they got uh, a bargain. Yes. Yeah, that, this is the sports bargain of the summer. I have a feeling. You'll find people who sat here this evening remembering 20, 30 years from now. They saw.